you probably think China and America are worlds apart. Separated by thousands of miles and centuries of history. But we're going to set the record straight. Cheers. We're about to explore two of the greatest cities on Earth. And we've got 24 hours to discover what it is that ties these cities and all of us together. I'm Bridget Trong, and I live and work in North America. Oh my I'm Amy Lyons, and I moved to China 10 years ago. Cheers to that. Together, we're on a mission to reveal the surprising connectivity between American and Chinese cities. The stories we find will surprise you as we uncover how two cities share one heartbeat. This is Sister Cities. It's now late afternoon, and the people of St. Louis and Nanjing are starting to ease into the evening. We know Nanjing is about 2,000 years older than St. Louis, but there's one tradition where St. Louis is the veteran and Nanjing is the newcomer, beer making. Earthbound Beer is an eight-year-old brewery housed in a 150-year-old brewery building. It's the perfect place to experience how brewing beer is both old and new in St. Louis. Stuart, this is the bread basket of America, essentially, right over here. I, I, these are local ingredients that you can take advantage of whenever you want to. Right, so we're located in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, which is right in the middle of the country. We're surrounded by farmland that grows uh, a lot of different products, including barley and hops. And that'll be 99.9% .9 of the beer. So having these two ingredients so close to us and being able to have close communication with farmers really enables us to dial in what we're looking for to make our beers. St. Louis started with a bunch of small breweries and then Anheuser-Busch got really large and really set the global standard for beer for probably over 100 years. I think what you would find about St. Louis is both a sort of an adherence to tradition, but then you would also find creativity, you would find resourcefulness, and you would find a burgeoning ecosystem where breweries are all kind of exploring their own little niches and figuring out how to, how to excel at what they want to do and how to kind of create a network of, um, of solidarity. And I think it's really phenomenal to be able to help write the next chapter where we've returned to a bunch of smaller breweries doing a lot of really experimental things. So what we have here, uh, this was originally used to cellar beer 150 years ago, so from the 1860s onward, and now we use it to uh, ferment our own beer. Now this building, like you said, has been around for 150 years, but now you're reclaiming this space and right. making it your own and creating your own products. That must feel pretty good. It feels great because we're in, you know, we're in a building where the original founders couldn't have ever imagined having beer in cans because cans for beer just didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And now we have modern technology and it's really awesome to be able to readapt this space to its original use and to bring in modern ideas of craft breweries and craftsmanship into it. This was traditionally how you uh, fermented and kept beer cold. Obviously before refrigeration or air conditioning, that was hard to do. So what German brewers did and what German brewers in America did was they found these cities that had really large underground storage areas like these caves. They would bring in giant vats of beer down here and they would store them in these cellars with huge blocks of ice that they brought down from uh, the Great Lakes or from the upper Mississippi River. I think Earthbound captures the spirit of St. Louis because we really started from a very scrappy, humble origin, and we've managed to build this beautiful tap room in a 150-year-old building. So we've managed to repurpose this big piece of St. Louis history for modern use that still kind of calls back to the heritage of St. Louis. It's really awesome to have rehabbed this space um, into something that we can show off. So we can show off St. Louis history and show off how much attention to detail and how much work goes into every beer that you drink. We've really become a community hub for all sorts of groups of people, organizations, families, and we have a community of regulars that all have met each other and exist here. And I think that that community involvement, that excitement to be somewhere and be doing something and be connected to others is a big part of what makes St. Louis so special. 
while Nanjing can't match St. Louis's rich history of brewmasters, it is creating its own new culture of microbreweries with its own Chinese flavor. So we're on our way to meet someone very, very special, but he's asked us to pick up some puffed rice on our way. And I think the rice is about to start popping, just like popcorn. Just waiting for that sound. Oh, <laughs> Armed with a bag of puffed rice, it's time to learn how to brew beer, Nanjing style. Wow. <laughs> Masagao, hi. Hi, how, Amy. How are you? Nice. Oh, it feels like I've just walked into a science experiment. <laughs> uh, this is our experimental brewery. This is Master Gao, China's number one craft beer brewmaster. He's leading the country's growing homebrew movement from his hugely popular pub right here in Nanjing. So cool. Well, I've yeah. brought you your puffed rice that you oh, asked nice. for. Yes, what great. What are you going to do with this? Uh, let me see if they're good enough. <laughs> yeah, very crispy. Yeah? So we're going to brew a puffed rice pale ale. A puffed rice pale ale. Right. So the beer will taste like sake, champagne, and IPA. Why did you start brewing beer? Because I, I just need to drink them. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on here. We're gonna put hot water in here. Okay. Then put the malt and the puff rice all together in here. Give it a temperature, let it sit for one hour. Then we'll have wort. Would you say making beer is hard? It's hard to amateurs. <laughs> So how long will this beer take to make from beginning to end, Master Gal? Uh, this is going to take about 30 days. 30 days. Yeast works very slow. <laughs> I'm going, I'm putting it in. Put it in and make sure you smell it. Okay. Give it a good inhale. <laughs> oh, it, it comes out straight away. Yes, it does. Oh, it's so fragrant. Yeah, we hope it will stay in the beer as well. Mom, I did it. I made beer. <laughs> this is our first beer. The whole beer in our beer is the first beer. It's also the first beer in the beer. At that time, there was no beer in the beer. The beer in the beer was the first beer in the beer. The beer in the beer was the first beer. 但是没有一个中国那种标签的东西。然后我做啤酒的时候，我就想，我说我要一个特别中国的东西，就是就是土掉渣的一个中国的东西。很多人都没有见过这样一个设计。我说中国啤酒能做成这样的，就是很令人兴奋的那时候。And this all started from an interest in beer. Right. So guys, follow your dreams. You never know what might happen. I developed my Beer loving during my stay in the U.S. Of course, well, I oh. love cheese and a beer. Cheese and beer. <laughs> yes. It's got a sweetness, almost a fruitiness as well to it. Fruitiness from the hops. From the hops. Yes, from the hops. Wow. Yeah. It's very pleasant. I can definitely taste the puff rice, but not in an overwhelming way. Right. It's quite subtle. Okay, what's up next, Master Gal? So we have a lot of beers. Sweet, sour, and a spicy. <laughs> you Listen. mentioned it um, tastes like kimchi. It is. Oh, smells interesting. I can smell the jalapeno or garlic. something. Oh, yeah, onion. the garlic. Yeah. And the onion, yeah. yeah. Lots of levels of flavor. Okay, let's try it. Ginger. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I love that. <laughs> I know, surprisingly. Surprisingly good, oh. isn't it? This city gives us so many inspiration 
it's a really amazing way to bring Nanjing culture to the world through yeah. beer. Beer is the uh, glue that put people together. <laughs> beer brings the world together. Yeah. Word, word, smaller word. Make cheers. Small... I'll cheers, cheers to that. Cheers. Mm. St. Louis isn't just a beer town, it's a jazz town. Jazz musicians from across the nation gathered here to create a signature sound. The St. Louis is, is more diverse than you might think. And so anytime you can get a diverse group in a room, you know, influences from different places are definitely gonna happen. Basically we're wanting to create an organic sound that honors both the traditions of jazz, but also really speaks to the groove elements that we like. One of the starting points when you look back at the history of St. Louis would definitely be kind of a ragtime vibe. Going into the 20s, uh, the dance band became a primary uh, vehicle for people to work, and that was definitely very present in the St. Louis scene. was a strong working musician community uh, in St. Louis coming up through the swing era, which is around World War II. As you're in the 50s and the 60s, one of the sounds that you might hear is more of like a, a cool jazz sound, which uh, Miles Davis was a big part of that. The 70s was when the so-called fusion thing was happening in jazz in general. We owe a lot to that kind of 70s fusion, Herbie Hancock type sound. And it makes everything a little funkier, so <laughs> we dig that. In St. Louis and Nanjing, the same spirit is at play, honoring the past while creating something new. This is Nanjing Baiju, the musical style that was created by garment workers 500 years ago to help pass the time. It's usually performed by one singer telling stories to fellow workers, stories from history, mythology, and even the news of the day. Today, there are few Nanjing Baiju performers left, but a new generation of young artists are determined to bring it back with a modern twist.那我们这个白菊呢是古代的云景的织机工人但是我们现在创新的作品
南京还有这么多的美食，原来南京还有这么多好玩的地方。我们希望可以借助这个载体，把呃我们的这些文化，可以让全世界人都能看见。我希望可以把这个呢，通过一个载体，就是让大家更多的人，世界的人民知道我们南京，啊，然后了解我们南京，最后爱上我们南京。The heartbeat of every city is the people, and the heartbeat of the people is their family. This is my father's side of the family. This is us years ago. Yeah. And up this shelf here is my mother's family. So I like to do a um, like a homage to each generation. Mm -hmm. And up here is actually the latest. This is me, my husband, and our children who are here now. You can tell it's a very close knit family. Yes. This is the Flowers family. They've lived in St. Louis for over 150 years. Every week, they gather to appreciate one another and the city they call home. I'm getting a sense that St. Louis really does foster this sense of community. Also, family ties are really important here. That's that's well, the impression I'm getting. Family. Yeah, you know, this is my niece and my nephew. This is the fourth generation to still be able to connect with their great grandpa and have memories of their great grandpa. You know, my mom will send a text, we cook in the Sunday. What are you contributing? Because you're not coming empty handed. So are we going to be tasting a few of your finest dishes? Man, you just get your plate served now. <laughs> you sit down and get his plate served. probably earned that right by now. No, yeah. my, father, my father stays on the grill now, so we'll be tasting some of his. OK, everybody ready to eat? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I just, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time of family food and fellowship. Family definitely means a lot. I just really appreciate that fellowship. We are having as asparagus, <laughs> and it has Parmesan cheese. We're having barbecue ribs and chicken and spaghetti salad. I want them to have that, like I did years ago, what family meant coming together. And I guess most families know what, no matter where you are, where why, coming together, uh, with a meal is something that you do. I've had the opportunity to meet with St. Louisans, yes. um, explore this city, yes. trying to figure out what the spirit of St. Louis is all about. People coming together, people um, learning each other's different cultures because it's a melting pot here, just like a lot of cities. And I like to venture out and try different things from different people because food is nationwide, you know, it's worldwide and it brings everybody together, you know. St. Louis and Nanjing may be over 7,000 miles apart, but they share the same love story. A family getting together across the generations to share a precious meal. We yeah, very good. <笑>啊 
St. Louis has a lot of rich history that I feel like a lot of people don't really understand. Why, so why do you feel so protective of your city? It's our backyard. Yeah, it, it you, know? you know, St. Louis are often regarded as like, you know, the underdog. We're not a, a really big city, um, especially what's happening, you know, the 21st century when it comes to modern day civil rights. Like it's been a lot that's gone on in St. Louis, just within the past 10 years alone. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not just, you know, racism, police shootings, and just, that's not just what we are. Like, we have culture here. When you think about the Great Migration and, and people who have settled specifically in St. Louis, the cost of living here, like, the opportunities here, like, in the heart of the city, we have influence all around this country. We have a saying, if you can make it in St. Louis, you can make it anywhere. Thank you. Whoa, <laughs> 快点尝一尝<笑> 就是比如像哪一家遇到困难的时候is a shared spirit of love, friendship, family, and connection. That's what makes it special. It's powerful to see and feel how two cities so far apart can actually share one heart. Oh, that's amazing. It is a good Born on the banks of two mighty rivers, two cities proud of their past and their future. Looking forward together as sister cities.